Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Affinity Photo. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a panorama using Affinity Photo. As you can see, I have Affinity Photo open, but there isn't an image open in it. So we have to load in the images that we're going to use for our panorama. To do that, go up to the top file menu and down to New Panorama. When you do that, this dialog box will open up. And what we need to do is populate the left side with the images for our panorama. And to do that, we'll go down to where it says Add, and then we'll just navigate to uh, the area in, on our computer where our panoramic images are, or the images that we're going to use for our panorama. So I have them on the desktop. They're in this folder here. And I just have three images, you could see. So we're just going to select all three. You'll notice they're TIFF files. I just made them TIFF files because I thought it would just make the whole process go a little quicker for this video. You can use raw files. So you could stitch together raw files, which is, is really powerful in Affinity Photo. You could also do JPEGs and other file types as well. But we'll do these TIFF files and we're going to click open. And once I do that, you'll see that the dialog box will now have the left side populated with our three images that we're going to use for the panorama. Now you could deselect them if you found you added one you don't want to add. You could add more if you want by clicking the add button and from there. Once you have the images that you want for your panorama on this left side and they're all checked, click stitch panorama. And then what it will do, it will stitch those images together and give you a preview over on the right side. And you can see there's our preview. When you're satisfied with that, just click OK. Then what will happen is you're going to open up into the panorama work area with our, in this case, three images stitched together. And you can see it's rendering the panorama right now. So right now it looks a little rough, but allow it to finish a rendering. And once it does, you'll see that it's pretty much perfect. It did a really uh, nice job of stitching those three images together. But as is common with a panorama, when you do stretch, stitch a number of images together, you'll get a lot of transparent pixels. Even though I was on a tripod for this shot, you still will get these pixels. So we need to deal with these. There's a couple different ways you could do it. You could just go to the crop tool. And if you click on the crop tool, you have some um, functions in the tool that will help you eliminate the transparent pixels. The easiest thing is right here where it says crop to opaque. If you just click this button, it will pull the handles in so that you eliminated all of the transparent pixels and all you're going to end up with are image. Now, if you find you don't like that, you could of course come in and just grab handles and crop this any way you'd like. You have by default the rule of thirds overlay here to help you uh, crop the image. You also could click this little drop down and either use the golden spiral if you prefer that or diagonals. Now in this case here it doesn't really matter. I'm not um, so much interested for this video making it a perfect composition. I want to just kind of demonstrate the panorama features involved here. Now if you started to crop it like I did and you realize you want to kind of go back, just go to where it says crop two bounds. Click on this button and you'll basically just full, you know, go to full uh, image including the transparent pixels. So we're kind of right back where we started. So you could crop out those transparent pixels. That's one way. Another thing you could do is you could allow Affinity Photo to kind of interpolate what should be beyond the actual pixels, and it will fill in the transparent area with image. It does it, you know, using smart algorithms that are included in the, you know, in the programming of the software. Now, this will work very well if 
around your border, around the edges, you have sky or grass. But if you have a complex structure there, like a building or um, even trees, something like that, it probably won't work as well. Now, it should work fine for this image because the transparent pixels are either touching sky or grass. So it should work pretty well on this image. Now, to do it, what you will do is go up here in this top button. It says, In Paint Missing Areas. Click that so that's active. Then go over here and click Apply. By the way, if you chose to crop the image instead of in painting the transparent pixels, once you crop the image, you would click Apply as well. So I'm going to click Apply. And what it will do, it will then take the image and open it up into the photo persona. But you can see it's rendering panorama up here at the top. And we still have these transparent pixels. Well, just allow it to chug away. This takes up a considerable amount of computing power to do this. So depending on how big your image is and how complex your image is, this may take a little while to render. Now in the case here, I don't think it's going to take too long. But if it is, I'll pause this video and I'll restart it once it's rendered. Once it's rendered, oh, there it goes. It's already done. And there you could see it filled in all those transparent pixels. So we really have a perfectly rendered image. And as I mentioned, this uh, technique works very well as long as there's sky or grass and nothing too complicated. If you had something there like a building or tree, even you know some other type of structure, it might not look right if you do that. You'd be better off cropping the image. Now, once we're open in the photo persona, we could do anything we want here to further adjust the image. And if you decide you do want to crop it from this point, you could, of course, go to the crop tool and crop it here if you'd like. But that's really the gist of how to stitch together a panorama using Affinity Photo. You can see it's very easy and there's a lot of tools involved that will help you create a very, very um, beautiful panoramic image. That's it for this video. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.